how do I create recurring revenue from support or advisory contracts without talking about hours? I thought that's a good Jonathan yeah. question. It needs to be it needs to be presented as insurance. So you're you're going to want to talk about um, response time and your quality of of what's it called quality of service? No, um, continuity, business continuity, all those mm. sorts of things. So they. What often comes up in this question is a big variable, which is whether or not you're going to be publishing fixed prices for this, or if you're going to be value pricing this on a client by client basis. Uh, so if you built something for someone and it's all your code, or you're very familiar with the code and you fixed all the, all the scary stuff, you're very familiar with the code base for one reason or another, and you want to, and this is a, this is a big if, if you want to support that then that's a big business model choice uh and it's lower value than the original build or whatever you did before this nobody wants to pay uh, as much to the janitors as they did to the architects like mm -hmm. you just don't so or the maintenance people and it's just lower value so it becomes a, a thin margin business but it's got a lot of upsides which uh, are things like predictability because people are pretty much never going to not need this they're always going to need this because software isn't set it and forget it it's always going to be organic things are going to change platform updates security uh, vulnerabilities all of those things are going to change and they're going to need someone because presumably they don't have an internal team or you wouldn't be asking this question so you just have to decide like do you want to be on call you know what you know do you have people uh, around the world in different time zones or is it just you and if if somebody's website goes down in the middle of the night on Black Friday, you need to get out of bed like a fireman. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I, I, failed, I lost the plot though. What's the original question? Well, well, yeah, I, I want you to talk to the other side of this. It's how, how do I create recurring revenue from support or advisory contracts without okay. talking about hours? The advisory one is just 24 seven unlimited. Just do that because in uh, that, there are ways to insulate yourself against abuse of, of your time being abused, which I've talked about at length. But the advisory thing, the, the discussion about hours is you can contact me 24 seven over the agreed upon channel. For me, it was always Slack or email or Basecamp, depending on the era. And I'll get back to you within uh, X, whatever the response time is with mm -hmm. an answer or at least a reply to say that I have to research it and I'll give you an ETA. So. Uh, so then you don't have to be up all night. The advisory is way easier to, to get the hours thing because if they're coming to you in an advisory capacity, the whole premise is that they just they just need to have an expert on speed dial so that they, they can get a quick answer to a question from someone they trust. So they're not expecting you, if it's, if it's actually advisory, they're not expecting you to be sitting in every meeting or reading through every email thread or something like that. So you just, you want to make sure that you set the expectation appropriately. So that one's easy. You just, yeah, 24 seven unlimited, ask me as many questions as you want. Um, the I just want to throw one, in a caveat though, um, mm -hmm. one person or multiple people. Right. So there, like I said, there are some, I've talked about this a lot. So since this is lightning, I don't feel like I should go into it because we're going to be here all day, but there are definitely ways that you can shoot yourself in the foot with this model. Uh, just Google for. Jonathan Stark advisory retainers, and there's like 20 articles on my website that talk about it. Uh, there's probably three or four different ways that you can prevent them from overwhelming you. The support thing is much trickier because it's implementation work. So it's like, well, how much do we get? And the answer is basically as much as you need to maintain the service levels that we're promising. So you probably would have tiers of you know three different tiers if you were going to publish the prices you probably have three different tiers that you know where you know uh whatever bronze silver gold whatever you call it and the, the lowest one is going to have the longest response time the middle one is going to have the middlest response time the top <laughs> one's going to have the shortest response time uh you're probably going to do things like uh, in the higher tiers you probably do things like um, uh, monthly checkups, uh, disaster recovery, testing quarterly, um, you know, I'm assuming software here. So, uh, there's just different things that will decrease 
the likelihood and impact of any risk that they're afraid of coming true. So you got to figure out what they're afraid of happening and then say like, okay, we're going to decrease the odds of these things happening. And this is how much it's going to cost for yeah. insurance. Something like, yeah, it's insurance. It's totally yeah. insurance. Yeah. I like that angle. You're taking on risk yeah. in return for money. How many hours do we get? You get as many as it takes to maintain these services. The, the promise mm -hmm. we're, keep, we're making. Right. We're going to keep our promise. If it takes us no hours this month, great. If it takes us 100 hours this month, great. Mm -hmm. 